It's a busy day. Come on, come on, come on, come on. So this cage contains uh, three layers. Only one layer had been occupied in the middle. We still have to buy some plywood over here. And oh, what happened? Oh my goodness, this is not good. Hi guys, it's a beautiful day once again and welcome back to Dexter's World Channel. I must say that this day is beautiful though we are experiencing heavy downpour just last night and until this morning. This gives us some difficulties on how to feed our animals but the rain will not hamper us because whatever circumstances that we may be in, the care and protection of our animals is already running through our veins. You are animal lover, you will understand what I'm talking about. You are always seeing the welfare and the healthy of our animals. And I will do this personally because I wanted that our animals will still eat the right kind of food even during the rain. And this is what we're gonna do today. So we have here this Azola. We will get some of this Azola to feed our chickens and geese. And actually, we still have so many chickens right at the farm. They are being taken care of by our staff there. But the soon as possible time, we're going to be uh, getting all those animals right there at the old farm. And we will transfer them all here at the house. And this is our daily routine. We're going to mix this with this pellet for our geese and for our chickens. Okay, just like that. See? Wow. And this is very delicious for them and this is our daily uh, mixture of food see we'll mix this one and please note that if we're gonna take half of this and then we will just uh, allow them to regrow the following morning they will multiply and cover this place again so they are really very easy to multiply just yesterday I got some one half of this and they are now spreading like a wildfire. That's my term for this Azola. And aside from the Azola, we can also feed our water spinach to our turkeys. Just a little amount of this will already boost their immune system, especially during this season, this rainy season here in our country, the Philippines. And this will already give them the best food for this breakfast. It's a busy day. It's a busy day. I know you're very hungry now. Yes, just wait for a while. The chicken is here. By the way, during the night, I instructed my staff to enclose or put this turkeys right here inside the cage because the dogs are really attacking them. There are actually four dogs that are the culprits of attacking our turkeys. Last video, we shared that with you and we have able to neutralize the three of them. There's still one that is uh, roaming around and can just stay in attack anytime. So we are uh, taking some precautions Oh, you will go out. Oh, very fat. <laughs> okay. Okay. We are taking care of this because our turkeys was reduced to four. One gobbler and three hens. We used to have 15 of them and they were all attacked by the dogs. And that is why I said that we will take an extra care of this uh, 
the remnants because well this is also even a good start the three hens can lay eggs very massively and we are not allowing them to sit on their eggs actually we're putting all the eggs inside in the incubator so come on let's free them now okay they fly wow that's it good it's a good fly how yeah, about you, Gobbler? Oh, very fat! <laughs> Too heavy! <laughs> Maybe around 7 kilos. Oh, pop, 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 pop. oh best! Wait, ah. <laughs> Wait for a while. You will eat your breakfast. Here. Nice. So they're eager now to eat the breakfast. Come on. Come on, guys. Okay. Oops. Oh. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. Come on, eat. The chickens. Don't bite, just eat. Very noisy. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. You will eat the food. Okay, okay. Down. You are nice. Wait for a while. Why are you very noisy? I like the food. What do you like? Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And we have some ducks here. These are the chicks that we sold in the the market but uh, out of 100 chicks there are eight left so i decided to just bring them here for our future breeders as well these are the itik pinas i'm really very eager to transfer all the animals right here you know that the old farm previous farm that we have will be used by the government for public uh, purpose that's why we are on this uh, transition period actually just yesterday we made some effort to destroy or dismantle our cage for the parakeets and even this african lovebirds and we're gonna be uh, making some new cage right here for the parakeets
you know that our African lovebirds are already here. We tried our best to, the soonest possible time, build another cage here at the house for our parakeets. And I know that our parakeets can just adjust with this uh, new disturbance. And with me taking care of them personally, I believe that they're gonna be able to recover very easily and I would like to take care of them personally. I would like to give them some vitamins and all these foods that they're gonna like to eat. And we have here this bald chicken. Peter, Peter is here. Peter, come on. Oh, you know this bald chicken is his favorite pet here. Oh, Peter, come on. Peter is bald chicken. Oh, eat, come on, eat. <laughs> You're already big. <laughs> I featured him sometime in two months ago. Uh, Peter was just so small. I call him Peter because I have a friend whose name is Peter and he's going to become bald already. So, you see that? Name after you, Peter, if you're watching this video. And the soonest possible time, we can also try to breed this kind of chicken. And now we are going to feed all our quails. And after feeding this commercial pellet, we normally accustom them to eat the, the azola. So we will feed our quails. Come on, let's go. Oh my quails, these are another delicious food that you're gonna eat today. Every morning I'm feeding them with this uh, very miraculous fern. I will say that this is miraculous because this is actually a great help to our farmers and that's why I'm advocating that our farmers would really try this Azola because this will promote the health, boost the immune system of our quails. You guys can see the eggs that were collected just yesterday. Wow, these are some 90 eggs and each of this tray can contain 100 eggs of the quail. Every day we are collecting 270 to 300 eggs and we are still on the process of, you know, completing the goal which is to raise some 3,000 layer quails for this year. For those of you who were with me when we started this quail farming, we only have started around 29 quails, breeder quails actually, and we waited patiently for them to lay their eggs. And now that they are producing offsprings already, we have multiplied them a lot. And right there at the incubator, we're about to harvest or to put here some 400 chicks, new chicks that have been hatched inside in the incubator. And for the meantime, just allow me to feed this uh, Azola to our quail. Huh, these are the younger ones. There are 300 of them that are here. There is a problem actually right now because the cats in the neighborhood are actually attacking some of our quails. I already have actually uh, witnessed myself that cats are really eating our quails so this case contains uh, three layers only one layer had been occupied in the middle we still have to buy some plywood over here so that uh, we can utilize all this uh, stages the all these layers actually and oh what happened oh my goodness this is not good Oh my god, what happened? Another attack by the cats. You can see the blood right here. Oh my god. These are the downside of, you know. To! Don't send it to! Oh, come on. It's so sad. Another disaster. But good that all this that are placed here are all male quails because they're already disturbing the cages 
I mean, the presence of more males, I mean, plenty males inside the layer cages is uh, not good. That's why I caught some of the male quails, the cocks actually, that have created some chaos inside in this uh, breeding cages. And uh, I placed them here. I did not realize that they can be reached by the cats. Yes, I always say that this is a learning process for us and we will not get discouraged. Of course, we still have so many quails and we can even produce more than 3,000 for this year. I am very, very sure of that because we are already putting inside some 300 to 400 quail eggs every two days. But uh, we have to address this. We already have addressed the issue about the dogs that are eating our turkeys. Now we face another problem, the cats. And these are all in the, in the neighborhood. This is a subdivision. You can see many cats, especially during the night. And they're eating our quails. So this is a setback, but uh, we have to move on and do some, you know, some uh, protection for our animals, especially the birds. I don't kill cats, actually. What I'm thinking is to just inform the owner, or I don't know, maybe you have some other suggestions that you could uh, help me in addressing this problem. But for the meantime, we will proceed to, you know, uh, giving some of this uh, azola. They need to eat this one. Oh, these cats are carnivores. I love cats, but I don't love this kind of disaster that they're doing to my quails. They look terrified. This is not the usual behavior of these quails. They would normally eat the, the Azola. As soon as it's uh, given to them, they will normally eat that immediately, but you look, they're scared. And maybe they are in, still having the phobia when the cats attack right here. Some of my friends told me to, you know, Dexter, we wanted to visit your farm. But I told them that we are on the transition process because we are vacating all our animals from the old to this new site that we tried to develop. And I told them that just uh, forgive me for this uh, period where we're going to transfer all our animals and finally settle them here. But the soon as possible time, we're going to allow our friends to come here and witness what we are doing here at the house. This is a good development because we already have some place here for our parakeets. And today we're gonna erect some posts right there and we will put the screen and the roofings and our parakeets will just uh, see the beauty of the nature of the catfish. Actually, I already have grown some of our water spinach and I told you that I'm dead serious about this one. We have some vacant styrofoams right there. But because of lack of time, we are unable to do this. But you can expect that in the coming days, we can fill this with cups of lettuce right there and also water spinach, helping us the feeding of our animals right here. We also have tried transferring all our fry of this Japanese koi, they are massive. I estimated them to reach around 20,000 fry of this uh, Japanese koi. And you can see them right there, utilize the big tank. This is already in preparation for our new site and that's gonna be exciting. My ultimate dream really is to make an ecotourism restaurant or park where people can just come in and uh, appreciate the beauty of our animals. They can eat food, native foods from the farm. These are the ultimate dreams that I have in mind. I hope this can be realized. And I would like to ask for your support and help me achieve these goals because I cannot do this alone. I need your backing up. And if you're not subscribed, maybe you, you will ask me, how would I help you? Or how could I help you? Well, by just subscribing to this channel, that's already a big help from you guys. And if you are not subscribed, once again, I would like to say, please subscribe and hit that notification bell because we are uploading videos every two days now. And thank you for those ones who have joined this channel.
thank you for those ones who have made an effort to make some suggestions and comments on what we're gonna do next and what we're gonna do to address the problem I owe you a lot I owe a lot from you guys that's why I said that this is a big family of animal lovers and pet lovers and farmers and uh, we will venture this journey together only here at Dexter's World!